I didn't even see this week's state of the game. Okay, let's go. Just pray Watsy when it's warrants in. Hello Just and to welcome to Weekly I'm kind of the same. I am your host, Blake Rasmussen. And uh, I am flying without a net this week. Producer Sean is off, so I'm running the back end all on my own here with, with these two hands. We're going to end this, this whole setup. We're going to see how that goes. Um, but we definitely wanted to make sure to bring you the show because uh, we are celebrating. What happened to yes. your good headset, Blake? What happened? Anniversary of Magic the Gathering Arena, which kind of blows my mind, you two. Uh, I, you know, I've, I've been at Wizards for nine years, and it just, I, I could swear this was two years ago that we launched this thing, but it's been five years. It's older than my kid. Um, so we are going to talk about a ton of stuff uh, about Arena today. We're going to cover the content of two articles that we've done in the last two days. We're going to answer a ton of your questions. Uh, we're probably going to spend most of the show on Q&A. Like um, so this Ooh. is where I introduce the people who are going to be asking those questions. This okay, segment. good. Uh, Chris Carrots and Ian Adams with... Like any question that's answered, everything's good. Any question they don't answer, we take a drink or take a hit. Should we do that? I mean, you could drink cider, apple cider, apple juice grape juice, water, but we are good at talking, talking about magic, talking about arena. Yes. So we're going to kick talk things magic. off, everyone, uh, just by, by kind of checking in. It's it's five years. Um, five years is a good chunk of time. How, five how are things year going Five-year anniversary. Uh, going pretty well. Uh, I think we've had a really good year. We've done a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, Wilds of the Drain just released, and that went relatively well. Uh, so uh, from a player perspective, you know, the launch, you know, we, we always have a little trepid. You know, Wilds of the Drain just released, and that went relatively well. Uh, so... Oh, uh, from Papa Bear. You know, I honestly, I kind of like Blake. I give him, I give him a lot of shit, though. When I look at Blake, I don't see bear. I, d I don't get bear vibes from Blake. <laughs> Am I <laughs> anyone else? I'm not. <laughs> I'm not 100 percent sure on that one. And we're really looking forward to wrapping up the year. It's been a great five years. I mean, this is uh, I have an article that just went live this morning. Mm -hmm. You know, part of that is like, you know, we're, you know, kind of how I close that is, uh, we are certainly closer to the beginning of this path than the end of it. We expect to be around for a very long time. So, uh, you know, this coming from if you don't know me at all, uh, I worked on Miko for 15 years, so I'm kind of familiar with the long haul of things. So. Uh, yeah, so I expect Arena to do the same. Mitgo is MTG online, if you didn't know. Uh... Watsy doesn't own it anymore. It was pawned off to some other company that uh, is, from what I hear, doing it better than Watsy ever did. Um, sure yeah, it's, it's been exciting. I'm started later than Chris. Uh, I've been here four years, so my my start date <laughs> that's, that's an understatement. Is leaving beta. <laughs> uh, my, so I, I start right with Arena leaving beta. Like I, yeah. I think I started literally the same week Arena left beta, and it's been exciting to see everything that's happened since then. It's easy to forget that, you know. Uh, even four years ago, there was no chat. There was no, uh, we had just gotten Brawl right when I started. Um, uh, there was no draft against human beings. It was only bot draft at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and the number of changes and improvements have been really exciting. And knowing what else we have coming is pretty thrilling. Yeah, and we're going to talk about Enlighten us. later. Oh. Um, but first, uh, so the actual celebration for the going to tell us what else is coming. Next week. Tell us what's yep. coming. Uh, oh, so yeah. what uh, chat's already kind of been asking, like, what, what do we have in store? So what? tell us what's coming next week to help celebrate that fifth anniversary. Uh, so starting on, uh, what is it? The tell 19th, us, Tuesday, tell us, Chris. Uh, as, as, every day starting that day, uh, when you log in, we'll have a little surprise for you waiting in your mailbox. Uh, and we'll continue to do that throughout the week. Uh, the team has, you know, a bunch of fun little stuff planned. So uh, we'll be doing that. Next um, week, okay. You know, the, the with, with being so close to what we don't have any MTG, you know, major Vegas. events, but, you know, we're supporting, uh, you know, hey, let's do some. We're talking with uh, Joey on the community team about doing some fun, like, uh, video content, talking with, with people on the team, like, hey, we're, we're, where were you five years ago? What are you doing mm -hmm. now? Dude, you know, that who's kind of going? Like, super fun. Mm -hmm. um, so. Is anyone going to M2G Vegas? I need a place to crash at for like a night or the weekend or something. So we're looking at some of those things. Uh, and again, just kind of celebrating the, you know, the five years of like, as Ian was saying, we've come from um, launching with standard uh, as the, the main format. and you know. Trying to force you to log in. I mean, they should be trying to force you to log in. I remember talking with a dev back in the day, like way, way, way back in the day. And you know when you finish all your dailies and even your weeklies, and after this, when you get your 15th win of the day and all this stuff is done, it, like, the only thing you really have to do at that point in time is grind the ladder or do events. Um, and the events used to actually give you a good way to farm for, uh, farm for your collection, and then they nerfed it 
and then they changed it completely to where you almost can't do anything as far as farming uh, for your cards. But I was like, hey, how come you don't have something to where it's like after your 15th win, you don't get like 50 gold or something like that. So people who actually just know life magic all the time can't get stuff, even if it's just a little bit like 50 gold. And one of the developers that I talked to at the time specifically said that they don't do that because it would create an ecosystem of people who just constantly grind all the time and it becomes borderline unethical because it makes you play all the time or it wants to make you play all the time. And that was a really interesting concept for me. And I was like, I agree with that and I can kind of see I can kind of see that line of thinking but there's not enough stuff to do in the game in order for that to really be a thing but you know it, it is just a collectible card game they want you to log in and play magic they don't want you to log in and enjoy the story so they're not going to put in a story mode they don't want you to log in and do events to farm for cards because they don't they only want you playing on ladder i guess or something i'm not exactly sure um yeah i i don't know it just seems like their their goals seem relatively muddy as far as what they want the player base to do outside of we want you to do whatever it is that you want to do that, that's like the beginning and end of that thought. And it seems very rudimentary. And like, because Magic the Gathering itself is not a video game, right? But Magic Arena is like halfway between a mobile game and a card game. It's like almost there, but it's not there which makes it not good in a lot of ways you know very limited play options to where we're at now where we're you know have half a dozen constructed formats uh you know weekly play options and, and mm -hmm. all of the other things that go along with that so that'll just be part of you know reinforcing that and again sharing more with you know a little bit more behind the scenes as we go and, and sharing you know some of the team that works to bring arena to players yeah and, and I do want to talk more about the the formats and, and the expansion Let's go. space since we put out an article yesterday about that. But I, there was a question I wanted to touch on uh, that's pertinent. So you mentioned the rewards in your mailbox. The question is, do you have to log in each day to get them, uh, whatever that special surprise is? Or if you miss a day, will they still be there? If you miss a day, you will be fine. Ooh. If you miss a day, you will be fine. Now, that's something most games will not do. Okay. You know, most of the, games don't allow you to I didn't do talk that. about this before. Like, again, we try to make it so, hey, when people have lives or whatever that they can engage with arena on their schedule you know it's part mm -hmm. of you know the, the promise of fast fun, fun magic where you where you're at so yeah. yeah if you don't log if you're busy because of life and can't make it great just whatever you log in your the little gifts will be for you Whoop. Great. it's one of the nice things about mailbox yes, i'm very happy to oh they don't update sparky decks yeah it would be interesting if they had like sparky difficulty levels i agree with you like if they had Sparky on like easy, medium, hard, ones that would actually have like the top meta decks, if they had Sparky best of three, if they had like all this other stuff, specifically so that you could just go against bots. Um, and now that, and that would also allow you the opportunity to have an offline mode um, to where you could just test out your decks uh, if you were like on an airplane or something, you could still be playing Magic. Um, so let's uh, let's we'll talk about the added features in a sec because that was today's article, and I think some people are still digesting that. Um, but looking back at yesterday, um, where are you all at in in thinking about formats? Are you looking at adding new formats? Are you looking at bolstering the formats that exist? Where where are you all on uh, formats on Myth, on uh, Arena? So uh, we're, go ahead, a very ahead. vague question. Uh, we are hard at work on getting to uh, competitive parity and Pioneer. That's one of my biggest. Aside from there's the obvious keep up with standard. So that's mm. always happening with us in terms of other active that's most work, important it's, thing yeah uh, get people with where they can they can build their tournament decks in pioneer employ them on arena uh practice for tournaments and have mm -hmm. those cards there as well as continuing to expand the non-tournament side of pioneer the stuff that's a little bit more janky or brewer focused or just favorite cards that people have that yep uh, might not see tournament play uh beyond that it's continuing to take care of the other formats we already have it's growing historic uh it's you know keeping up with the the, the half twos and then doing as much as we can of the 
additional mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jay's article yesterday, and Jay, if you don't know him, is the uh, design director for Arena. Really laid out, you know, some of the framing that we put around the formats with, uh, you know, is it a? That's who I need to talk to. I need to get an interview with Jay. If I can get an interview with Jay, that would be the most ideal scenario. Tabletop format, or is it a digital format? Is it a rotating format or a non-rotating format? That's kind of mm -hmm. the, you know, kind of that, you know, set of principles that we use uh, mm -hmm. to be right. Uh, let's make sure that we're have things in these different quadrants to engage the different kinds of players, but we're also always, you know, evaluating, right, who's doing what, what card, what, what are the needs for the product, right, you know, adding um, to, uh, hey, this is a need that we have, uh, so let's go ahead and commit to it. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you, Gerard, again, I appreciate the humidities. Or historic role growing in popularity, we're all across the board, but primarily historic role growing in popularity, there's going to mm -hmm. be a need there to support that more. Okay. Um, but what up, Ricardo? We're really trying to uh, look at what players are doing or what they're interested in and reinforce those things. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one of, one of the other bits of big news recently, um, when we're looking at formats, we, uh, we'd be remiss not to talk about uh, a number of the new exciting releases that Arena has coming up. Uh, we talked about a lot of them at Gen Con as part of the 30th anniversary mm -hmm. announcement. Uh, so there, there's, there's a bunch of cool stuff coming up. So there's uh, Cons is re-releasing the set, uh, just the full set. Um, you're going to pick up some exciting sets in the future. Uh, how, how are you all looking forward, and what are you all looking most forward to? I'm looking real forward. I'm personally uh, most excited about Modern Horizons 3. It's a little bit terrifying given the complexity of Modern Horizons sets, but yeah. uh, frankly, I... Okay, so when they said the majority of this was going to be a QA, and a I thought it was going to be a QA and a from like Twitch chat, not a QA and a that was like a curated Q&A, because that doesn't really feel like a QA and a to me. I've never drafted a Modern Horizons set as much as I wanted to, mm -hmm. and I'm very excited to be able to do it from here instead of <laughs> needing to go to the office. As like part of your job, you're like, no, I got, I got to test this on. I got to play more yeah. Modern Horizons 3, folks. Maybe that's just me, bugs. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Modern like, you know, again, I was on Magic Online. Modern Horizons formats are great. And being able to, you know, bring that to um, Arena was pretty important for me and just for kind of where we want to be moving forward, uh, particularly, Horizons. again, as a way to help support things like historic. And <laughs> Every question will be answered. I know, right? I should have flipped mm -hmm. the rules around. Uh, again, good, good content for players who love that kind of thing, love powerful magic. Blake, you're no uh, stranger to powerful magic. And no, I'm not. How awesome it is. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I think that's, that is something new for us. We're very excited. But, you know, we've, we've down, it'll be the third third year in a row that our summer, fourth year in a row that our summer is doing something kind of new and exciting, yeah. right? From Lord of the Rings this year to uh, mm -hmm. you know, Baldur's Gate last year, we're continually trying to find things that are new and exciting and um, players will enjoy. Yeah. Well, I've successfully steered the conversation to the most asked question in chat right now. Okay, there um, is So we're, we're talking about powerful magic. We're talking about future releases. Yes. Um, we know that cons is coming and with it, fetch lands. Um, so I'm going to ask two-part question. The first part is, Ooh, uh, has a decision been made? Coming. Are fetch lands going to be pre-banned in historic? Are they going to be playable in historic? Uh, is there any thinking in that space yet? Good question. Uh, well, I'm going to say a thing, and then I'll let uh, Ian say a thing. I, I don't think <laughs> we're, we're ready to answer that question today. Okay. Uh, one of the things um, that we've been talking about as we add more cards. All right, that's a cheers. Cards and sets to arena is uh, <laughs> historic's really healthy. Uh, mm -hmm. Historic started as, you know, kind of, a, oh, we need a place for players to play all their cards. Okay, that's how it started. Yeah. Yes. Where we're at now, though, is that we want uh, Historic to be healthy, engaging, and diverse. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, we're going to manage that format a little bit differently than just, say, all of the cards. You're already seeing that, you know, going all the way back to Strict Saving and, and some of the pre-bands there. Yep. Uh, so, you know, I think you can, again, we're not ready to announce today, but I think with that in mind, you can look at things like Fletch, Fetch Lands as being very powerful enablers, and are they healthy for the format? We're still talking about it, and mm -hmm. we have a little bit of time to make that decision. Just take out Fatal Push, and you'll be fine. Uh, so that's where You're we're fine. at. Like we want Don't even worry about healthy it. And diverse. Uh, we're going to use that as the lens moving forward for historic. So yeah, we will pre-ban as needed. Okay. Uh, yeah, the only thing I'd add to that is at the same time, we are aware that there is a growing list of cards that are on Arena that you can collect, that you can play with in like sealed events. And then there is no constructed format for those cards. That's We know that's there. And it is uh, a thing that we talk about. Okay, well, that's actually great because that was one of the other questions I saw that was leading into this was um, someone noted the growing list of powerful mm. but beloved cards that are not playable in, in 60 card formats, things like uh, Ragavan, Swords of Plowshares, that, that sort of deal that players do enjoy but don't you know have a place. Uh, but it sounds like you're all thinking on that and, and trying to come up with a solution. Yep. yep. I will also throw out, that for what it's worth, we had that no-ban event recently, and as much as everyone constantly tells me Lightning Bolt is fine, Lightning Bolt is really, really, really good. Like I've, <laughs> I've seen the numbers very recently. Yes. On the no ban, I, uh, that that would be a fun article. Just to see. here's data from the no ban event. Yeah, yeah. where is that information? Uh, you know, we, we paid. I would have loved to see that information to see how many people because I saw so many people really really excited about that no ban historic. I wasn't even excited for that no ban historic. I didn't even play that no ban historic because I knew it was going to be the same like two or three decks, 
And from what I hear, it was the same like four or five decks and everything just ended on like turn two, turn one or turn two. And I was like, mm. <laughs> it just, it would be interesting to see. Attention, uh, you know, I think some people in the community have mentioned, you know, the no ban event. It's again, it was run with a purpose. Mm -hmm. It's more than just fun. Like, so take that for leave. Damn. They were like, you think you do, but you don't. That was, that was their, <laughs> that was their blizzard moment. <laughs> and, and by the way, you don't want to, that, to do that either. You think you do, but you don't. Remember? <laughs> you think you do, but you don't. See, this guy got so much backlash on that. And I understand why. Because you think you do, but you don't. Is a very, very accurate statement coming from a developer or a, a game designer talking to a group of players. There is a there is a lot of that going on. It's just that he said it very bluntly and it seems like they did it in an event and they're like, you think you do, but you don't. Because people came out of that event being like, yeah, f that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, uh, well, let's let's take that a little bit further because you all run a lot of fun events, interesting events, that sort of stuff. But the day Everyone day, ran Channel Ugin, Channel Olamog, or Thoughtseize. Uh, yeah, you could run Channel Torment and Hailfire. There was like, yeah, there was a few things that you could do. The data to kind of inform future decisions. Is that is that right? Absolutely. Uh, and and you know, informed is the the right word that we try to use. We try to separate uh, data driven versus data informed. Like those are mm -hmm. separate things. But yeah, this is definitely you know a spot where we wanted to a do something really fun because again, playing powerful magic is really fun. Uh, but we also want to learn from it and then, all right, how do we use this to make better decisions moving forward? How do we, what do people like? What do we see as, you know, what would be a problem if we were going to mm -hmm. do something, you know, in this vein uh, and try and, try and get ahead of that? And then, you know, when we talk about, hey, we have this giant list of powerful magic cards, uh, some of them are absurdly powerful. Mortal like, Sun is your go-to. I love Immortal Sun. Yeah, right? yeah, channel is pretty powerful. Like, is there, like, is there a format that that card can be healthy in? Don't know. Canadian Highlander. I'll just throw that out there. <laughs> yeah, it's not sure. it's not busted in Canadian Highlander. <laughs> Almost no one plays it. It's it's great. Yeah, it's great. Hey, so hey, just hey. bring just bring Canadian Highlanders. In. So, I get one. People like feeling OP. Yeah, but a lot of people also don't like dying in one hit. When you play a land, like you're going first, you play a land, and then you thought seize, and then turn two, opponent plays a land, and then turn two, you go. And then you do whatever it is. And then turn two, they go. They channel Ugin, exile both your lands. Or turn two, Olamog, my bad. Exile both your lands. And you're like, well. One of those every show. I get to do my one. People like it, though, uh, I guess. Um, Some people like it. OK, so let's move into uh, just straight up Q&A section. Um, I'll just go through questions as they come through, no particular order. Uh, chat, what's helpful to me, if you want me to notice your question a little bit easier. Yeah, maybe. I, I mean, I'm in I'm in my own little vacuum. Uh, obviously, it's all <laughs> that's Yu-Gi-Oh, right? No, Yu-Gi-Oh, you have to play like 38,000 cards in order for you to actually win on turn zero. But with the magic stuff, it's just like you you just end up surrendering on turn two because of two cards. It's a little different. Similar results. It's just faster in magic, uh, requiring less cards and less reading. <laughs> Jack goes through. Tag it at magic at the beginning of the your question, and um, as long as it's not a, an offensive question, I'll ask it. Here, it's an Ian may or may not be able to answer it, but they'll let us know what that is. So, as long uh, as it's not an offensive question, have people been asking offensive questions? Achievements would be sweet. Oh, that's right. They said they were doing it. When we're we getting multiplayer formats, they need to just. They need to hire 250 developers and make a brand new client. And then re-release MTG Arena. Uh, one question I have seen uh, pop up a few times that I'm looking at uh, Bolt Snap Bolt here is asking specifically, but I've seen others ask it, is about fifth copy protection for reprints and the status of that. Yes, I agree. Should I take that one, Ian? Uh, yeah, I believe, I will note real quick that it wasn't my team that implemented it, so I believe I understand it, but the... Status of it is that we now do it by name. Previously, we did fifth copy protection of reprints if they were identical, so to make sure that you know you weren't getting um, 
another copy that was exactly the same other than the set symbol. Uh, mm -hmm. That has shifted to if the card has the same name and you have four of any of them from any set, you could have two from Ixalan, two from M21, and we go, okay, that's four. And we treat that as a card that you have four copies of. Uh, and that means that we uh, compensate you for any fifth copies in uh, limited formats and in pack opening. We don't put those into your packs until you've collected everything else in the set. All right. And that should have gone live with, or went live with Will, the yeah. release last week. Yep. That went live. Huh, so there you it's go. here. It's a thing. See, in my opinion, Ian about to fall asleep. I know. No, I feel like Ian is a zombie right here. He's like, he never looks like he wants to be there because sometimes there's new artworks for other of the same names. Do you know how there's like 30 different duresses? I think if you open up one of the duresses, that's a new artwork, you should, it should automatically unlock that art style. So you should just be able to toggle and be able to add four of that art style. I don't think you should have to get four of them in order to add four of those to your collection. That's just me though. I about this at Gen Con, but um, the, the specific question is four player historic brawl when please, but the, the general question is, is multiplayer. And I know you talked yeah. about this a bit around the Gen Con now. But... Yeah, so uh, we know we have a giant gap in what Arena offers uh, when we say you, know, you cannot play with three or four players. Yeah. Um, yeah. We are doing investigations and work towards like what how would we solve this problem uh that is ongoing we have very passionate uh folks on the team who uh and again we've talked about this before hinted about it this before we do um uh, we have a couple things we do some discretionary time where, where uh engineers and designers can work on passion projects we allocate some amount of time mm -hmm. to that uh we also have a program yeah. we call experimental frenzy where every few months we dedicate a couple of days to hey teams go self-serve some some projects and go explore some spaces uh and in both of those scenarios we have people who are uh looking actively at you know what does three or four player magic look like uh and then beyond that we're looking at you know my level and ian's level more strategic level one right as we get closer to what this looks like how do we implement it right there's a world in which um four player magic on your phone is just terrible so yeah. you know is, is that something that we want to do like uh, and if not then we have to be very deliberate about how we present that and, and and how we allow players to engage uh so we still have a lot of questions to answer but it is definitely on our uh minds i think mean, we talked about um at gen con we kind of gave i mean that seems like a pretty easy answer um no four player on your phone just block it out because you know who's playing on mobile and who's not simply based on the client that you're opening so you can gray out that format really on our uh minds i think we talked about um at gen con we kind of gave a roadmap and this was you know several we would expect it to be a, a few years away to actually having a solution for this mm -hmm. on our side but it is cool. certainly you know we have to talk now about stuff that we want to deliver in a couple of years it's one of the yeah. if, if you read the article it's one of the points in my article which is like oh the time is weird because it is also it seems both incredibly far away and also like very close two years that sounds like infinity away for multiplayer and then you talk to engineers <laughs> no. and it's like oh geez how are we going to do this in two years yeah, yeah. So. yep um uh, so i'll read the question it's kind of answered i guess and then I'll preface it a little bit. Um, the, the question I've seen this a number of times is, do you guys have the license to rebalance cards from Lords of the Ring on Arena? Uh, and I think we've said previously that it's, it's not a license issue. Uh, we just have said we don't plan to rebalance universes beyond cards. Am I remembering that correctly? That's a philosophical uh, thing. Uh, so we have, uh, I believe we have the ability to rebalance if we choose mm -hmm. to. Uh, you know, it does require some conversations, but we have that ability. Uh, I don't think we've ever said we're not going to rebalance. We also, again, are data informed, so we'll look and see where some issues are and make sure that we're making the right, right changes for when we have rebalances. But um, I, there's nothing preventing us from rebalancing as far as yeah. that. Right. It's, okay. There would be a conversation with the licensor, but that's true of everything you see that involves the licensor. Yeah. Every sleeve was a conversation. Every, every you know banner ad that you see was a conversation. So we have a lot yeah. of those conversations. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll throw this question out. It's more of a request than a question, but can we have spell stutter sprite on Arena? It's the only main fairy missing. Just you know, add it to your little list. <laughs> I'll, I'll knock that down. No, no, no. Ian is the right person to ask for that. No. Next question. Um, about the historic band list, and this might dovetail with a, something we talked about. Watsi well, definitely limits these guys' range on answers, almost like communism. I mean, think about it. They limit them a lot. Well, they can't answer a lot of the questions because a lot of it's time-based right you can't predict the future you can't be like okay this is what we're doing and we're gonna try to get this out in three years but then all of a sudden some crazy shit happens and they're like oh we're gonna have to push this back a year because we have to do this 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 and this what if the the demand for commander suddenly just kind of goes away and people give up on it and nobody cares anymore but, you know, more people are, like, glazing all over 
Pioneer. They're like, okay, well, we'll just move Pioneer up six months and then move Commander back six months because that's what more people are wanting. There's things like that. There's some things you can say and there's some things you just can't say because of a lot of different reasons. Earlier, are there any plans to revisit it since there are cards that were banned three years ago in the format of banned list? <laughs> Seriously glazing over Pioneer. And this might dovetail with a, something we talked about earlier. Are there any plans to revisit it since there are cards that were banned three years ago? Later, JC. No longer the same. Take it easy. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, I would expect us to revisit those lists when we see things have changed. But again, uh, I think the bar to get off the list is going to be pretty high. So, uh, and one of the reasons is just, you know, hey, we've, we've taken the step. It's, we're in a healthy spot. Like, I, I would expect to see something more along the lines of an experimental, like, event to see if, mm -hmm. to validate assumptions before we just pull something off the list. Yeah, yeah. they do a lot of that. So I, I would not expect something to just come off the list as a surprise. Yeah. Well, and that's, um, it's funny that that conversation is similar to the tabletop one in that. I didn't even see of all of, right, I didn't even hear all the question. Purchase. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll, I'll throw this question out. It's more of a request than a question, but can we have spells that are sprite on a... Um, yeah, the person to ask for that. Revisit it, since there are cards. Next question. Um, about the historic banned list, and this might dovetail with a thing, something we talked about earlier. Are there any plans what to up, revisit streak? it, since there are cards that were banned three years ago and the format is no longer the same? Uh, I would expect... Since there are cards that were banned three years ago and the format is no longer the same. True. True. Uh, I would expect us to revisit those lists when we see things have changed but again uh i think the bar to get off the list is going to be pretty high so uh and one of the reasons is just you know hey we've, we've taken the step it's we're in a healthy spot like I, I would expect to see something more along the lines of an experimental like event to see if mm -hmm. to validate assumptions before we just pull something off the list yeah like so I, I would not expect something to just come off the list as a surprise yeah well and that's um lame it's funny that that conversation is similar to the tabletop one. Unban Field um, of the Dead. The format's healthy. I want more yes, free it can wins. absorb taking cards off the ban list, but why risk it? Kind of, kind of thing. Unless, unless you know it's going to add and make the format better, which um, yeah. Arena has the ability to test that. It's a good way of thinking about it. Is we're not just looking for doesn't mess everything up. We're looking for actually makes things better. Right. Like the threshold is not doesn't ruin things. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but we don't know what your metrics are for what is better. What is better or what is worse? Because currently, the only thing that we see that you say what makes something better equivocates to we're going to put the cards that are most frequently used in uh, Pioneer tournaments in the game. So you're curating to only the highest level of players and the people who net deck, and that's it. That may be improving the game for some people, but that doesn't diversify. Like, it is, I don't know. Like, I, I don't mind having three to four S tier decks or two S tier decks and then having five A tier decks and 20 B tier decks. Like, I think that is perfectly healthy and I think that's good. I just feel that they don't think the same. But at the same time, it's like, Remember when they were doing all those changes when they um, they rebalanced like a ton of zombies? They're like, okay, we're going to buff a bunch of zombies so that, you know, maybe the zombie meta can, you know, it's not going to be S tier or top tier, but it's going to be more playable for those people who like to play zombies. That was the direction that I want them to go. I don't need them to make S tier decks for us. I need them to make things not dog water. And they did the same thing for Venture. Venture was super underpowered. They made a bunch of changes to Venture. And now I'm not gonna say it's super viable, but it is a lot better and it works really well. The cohesion is better. Uh, it's still pretty powerful if you let it go off. And it, like, it can go crazy. It can definitely go crazy if you have the right cards in your hand and in your deck. Like, yeah. Let's see. Can you consider revamping traditional sealed rewards? It doesn't award play in points, even though the qualifiers are sealed. Short answer, yeah. I will, I will take that note. All right, there we go. It's a good point. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Let's see. It's a good I think, point. I think, sealed, I think sealed is one where it's just, oh, it's a temporary format. It doesn't persist all the time. So I mm -hmm. uh, just, I, don't, I, can't, I can't think of any reasons why we wouldn't do that if that's your yep. preferred play method. Um. Ian, you might be able to answer this, um, but it might be a bigger discussion. Why are some cards that are not that powerful still 
uh, they use nerf to adjusted whatever uh, in historic, like Omnath or Fires of Invention? Uh, the answer is pretty similar to the take it off the ban list question. Um, it's it's not a question of Omnath doesn't break things if you revert the change. It's does historic get better if you revert the mm -hmm. change. Uh, that's not to say it's not worth us doing some investigating, but it would, it's something where we'd have to be confident. Like, this makes more interesting decks viable and playable rather than, you know, this collapses the meta or uh, puts an irritating or difficult to play against or play with deck into the game. Which it definitely would do both. It would change the meta. It would definitely warp the meta a bit, but that's like... Initially, that was the point of historic, but they're they're changing what they want historic to actually be. They want historic to be like a real format and not a digital format anymore. They want it to be something that's stable, something that's always just like there. Okay, they they want it to essentially be modern, to where like nothing changes. You're gonna be playing the same decks for thirty eight years and being like, I love this format. It's the best format ever. As a video game player, as an ex semi pro, pro, whatever you want to call it, gamer on many different games, the changes make the game fun. The changes make the game interesting. The changes make the game difficult because you always have to keep thinking about, okay, now this changed, so I have to adjust my playstyle or I have to adjust. Uh, our team composition, or we have to change uh, the weapons that we're using, or we have to change blah, 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 blah. But it's always like, it's always something that's changing every week or two. It, it like keeps everything fresh and everything interesting all the time. And that's what video games do. And that's what they said they were going to do with Historic earlier this year. And it seems like they completely flipped that around and was like, mm, nah. Yeah. But, you know, it's interesting to think uh, Omnath's a great example because we, you know, that we were just talking about fetch lands earlier. And when you're talking about these things, these decisions can't be made in a vacuum because you could say, yeah, fetch lands are fine to introduce to historic. You could say, yeah, Omnath is fine to put back down, but you put those together and you have a completely different story and you create a deck right there that, and maybe that deck would be good for the format, maybe it wouldn't, but there's uh, more to consider than them in a vacuum. Which is why you have the historic anthologies, uh, which is why you have alchemy sets that come out that can counteract specific uh, top tier decks if you want to do that. I mean, there's things that you've already done and you've already thought about. It's just for some reason, you're not putting that information together in your head. And it could be just that it's too much to deal with at one time because the team is still relatively small, right? Yeah, and we look at, you know, Health. And we talked about this. I think we had a format, you know, conversation, you know, last year on, on weekly, uh, where we talked mm -hmm. a little bit about uh, format diversity and, and where we like it to be. And when we look at some stuff like, oh, when we look at the top played decks, how many decks are in there in like yeah. the top twenty percent? How many decks in the top twenty percent? What's and played? Alchemy and Historic are super healthy. There's you know fifteen or twenty decks at any given time that are in the fifteen or twenty decks at any given time. Yeah, it seems like those fifteen or twenty decks aren't changing. It's the same fifteen twenty decks. It may be a variety, but since it's a everlasting format, as far as historic goes, those decks are always the same. So there may be a lot of decks, but they're all the same and it gets extremely repetitive. Maybe that's just me. Maybe it's just me. I'm, I don't know. Top 20% yeah. of the meta. And that's really high. Like, uh, you know, tabletop mm -hmm. formats tend to be a little bit more condensed, you know, maybe five or in that, in that space. So uh, anything, anything that would change that would get, you know, extra scrutiny for us. All right. Um, we're going to go back to duplicate protection because um, some of the some people in chat are um, asking for some clarification. It says you're currently not getting gems for fifth copies on reprints or vault progress for commons or uncommons. True. I'm going to have to double check. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, would, I would have to double check the implementation. I know that. See, I was pretty sure it wasn't implemented because I encountered the same exact thing. But. That's, uh, again, shifting from the name plus uh, effectively art was was the previous bar uh, now mm -hmm. it is oh just name uh, but we would have to double check and make sure everything's working correctly but we could certainly uh, verify nobody cares about okay. how, sh uh, how the question question about about the, is the about the fun decks are to play against social, probably with the uh, mm -hmm. yeah in some form or fashion on, on that all right 
Um, next question. So we have a, we've had a couple questions about different features people are asking about implementation implementation for. Um, are there any plans to implement chat in Arena? Uh, so it, we have talked about it a lot. Uh, we currently do not have it on a schedule. Um, I believe again at the Gen Con uh, event, or you know, you can go back and, and check it out on YouTube. Uh, we will be exploring social improvements as part of our charter for next year. So, mm -hmm. uh, well, what does that mean that uh, chat will, will make that cut? It depends on if we think we can provide a really good experience for players. That is a not answered. Cheers, everybody. We do not need chat in Arena. We 100% need chat in Arena. 100%. You could just disable it by default. We 100% need it. Why do you ask? Why do you ask that we need the most toxic community to be able to talk to each other on a card game that revolves around toxicity? As a content creator, when I'm playing land destruction, I want to be able to see the opponent chat at me, calling me names so that I can turn it into great content. <laughs> uh, but it is certainly part of the conversation around um, how do we make Arena feel a little bit more social and allow players uh, to connect with their friends better? Okay. Um, and then With their friends better? Okay, first of all, okay, when they added Arena to Steam, I was like, oh, this is perfect because if you're playing through Steam, they could just get rid of the friends list. They don't have to worry about it because the friends list has had problems for years and years, years and years. Like there was almost a year straight where the friends list just didn't work at all. Like period. Like you had friends on there, none of them showed up or it just always showed you offline. You couldn't do direct challenges. Nothing worked, right? So when they went to Steam, I was like, oh, perfect. Steam has a friends list where you can watch games you can just do like right click watch game or go into spectator mode if the game allows it. Uh, there was, you know, you can uh, add friends directly through the game. Um, you can uh, invite somebody to play with or play against. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff you can do straight through Steam, like the Steam friends list. And I was like, oh, perfect. That's what they're going to do. They're just going to utilize Steam and rip out the friends list from Arena which is the best thing that they could do probably. And I don't even think they thought about that <laughs> at all. And the other implementation question I've seen a number of times is on spectator mode. If there are any plans for that. Uh, answer continues to be the same on, on spectator mode. There are currently no plans for spectator mode. Which is ridiculous. There was a company that came to you and said, hey, we can implement a spectator mode into your game for $100,000 and you went back to them and said, no, we will do it ourselves. And now you say it's just not going to happen. Um, any hope for a gladiator queue? Uh, for those who don't know, a uh, singleton format, um, but with no commander or anything like that. You just kind of battle against each other, historic list. Uh, there is a ban list for it. It's mostly community run at this point, but we have run uh, some events in the past. So is there any any hope for a queue in the future? Probably not. Uh, my feeling on Glad, will there be queues, like events again in the future? I would be absolutely shocked if the answer wasn't yes. Uh, at the same time, and this is something like I've talked to Wheeler and, and he's on a similar page talking to other folks in the Gladiator community on their- uh, Events, the yes. Actual but queue, no. Gladiator being fan and community run is a big part of the identity of that format. And that's not something where we necessarily want to intercede. And I don't think mm -hmm. that anybody- Unity plans to add a runtime fee, meaning each time a game is downloaded, the developer of the game is charged. No <laughs> shot. I don't believe that for a second. Each time the game is downloaded and installed. He really wants to be in a world where, you know, the Gladiator community decides- I'd have to see it. And they've got a tournament coming. I don't up, and they reach believe out to that. Us and go, I can do- Cause I saw a lot of games like raging against it. A lot of uh, game developer companies raging against it. And I was like, cool, good, good for you that in two weeks we just the, the build windows aren't open right now and the conversation mm -hmm. is suddenly you know I, i'm glad that they are limber and can do things at the speed that they want to do them and make the calls that are right for them and i think that that's a healthy thing for that format um back to feature implementation possibilities uh there are several questions about um friend deck sharing sharing decks with your friends uh that is definitely that's a something great that idea uh you know, I, I mentioned the, the program we have called Experimental Frenzy. One of the ones for the last, uh, one of those frenzies we had, which was just a few weeks ago, is a piece of that, of, of a framework that would allow us to do that in the future. So uh, it is definitely something that we want. Uh, you know, it requires a, some work, but 
we are, you know, against Hell yeah. towards uh, the ability to do that. So if you weren't here at the beginning, the experimental frenzy thing is like um, what Google did uh, back in the day, which I actually don't even know if Google does it anymore. Um, but what they do is the developers have like set days or set hours that they could just work on whatever passion projects that they have for Arena that they want to implement. Uh, something that's like really cool. They're like, oh, um, I really want EDH. Does anyone else want EDH? Oh, I want EDH. And so a group of people get together and they start coding and they slowly do a project. It's obviously slow because only doing it like two hours a week or four hours a week, something like that. So it's just not a lot of time that they have to work on these things. Um, but uh, a lot of companies do it. Uh, I'm actually surprised that Actually, no, I'm not super surprised that they did that. I, I think initially uh, Alchemy with all the, the digital only cards. Personally, I specifically said that that came because a lot of their best developers were getting very bored and they were threatening leaving the company unless they could do something new and exciting. That was my theory. Um, you may or may not be able to answer this, but it's, it's a good question, so we'll ask it. Uh, will future remaster or re-release draft sets be Pioneer-focused, like Cons of Tarkir, or are any older sets being considered? As far out as I have scheduled, I am focused on Pioneer. Uh, that does not mean that's the only thing we can ever do, and that I, you know, we can't decide to do something older or another yeah. classic from the past. Uh, we have looked at some uh formats and as sort of as in those discretionary times people have done things like looked at portal and gone how close to portal is are we you know can we throw that on for fun uh and so yeah that's that's a thing we talk about but as far as our schedule is defined right now we're focused on pioneer yep and we have uh so cons will be a very interesting experiment it's the first time we're running of just a straight backlist set mm -hmm. like arena hasn't done that so we will learn from that <laughs> um but we certainly wanted to try that with a fan favorite F format to see you know what that experience is we've done a handful of remastered i mentioned in the the um Gen Con panel that, as as of now, Shadows Over Innistrad was the last remaster that we had planned. We don't plan it. We don't currently have plans for another one. That doesn't mean there won't be another one, but that's just not currently in our roadmap for the next couple of years. Uh, Pioneer Masters would be one of those things that kind of takes that spot. Uh, that will be uh, another really good experiment for Ooh, us. Um, Pioneer Masters. I think, uh, and I'll just preemptively answer this because I saw it in one of the Reddit threads, uh, and Jay answered it there, but Pioneer Masters will be a draftable format. We're planning on it to live up to the name of uh, you know Masters as, as much as we can. So. Wait, okay, so I asked earlier, but I didn't see it. It do they ever do chaos drafts in arena? As being a killer draft format makes sense. Correct. Um uh, will the Jurassic Park Universe of Beyond cards be coming to Arena when uh Ixalan comes out? Good uh, question. As I am the first Ian in Magic. Uh, uh but again, as we always we, we may have some cosmetics or something available to mm -hmm. for, for for fans of uh Jurassic Park. Daddy Strider. Your baby um, coffin. All right. Uh, I will read Fix this that. out, and I don't know how you'll answer. You'll answer how you want, but we're going to read it. It's, it it's, it's a good question. Um, there is currently a huge problem for constructed ranks. The top ranks are dominated by alchemy players to the point where you can't reach the top ranks playing anything else. Would you consider splitting constructed rank into different ranks for each format? Yes, because that's how it should have been uh, from the beginning. Uh, so I have opinions. And so these are currently opinions and not any uh, statement of the plans that we have, which is okay. uh, the, the ranked ladder... Uh, is uh, a good play experience for some players, but maybe not for everybody. So what I'm looking at is how do we provide the right experience for the different kinds of players? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and getting getting to number one is a very. I hate when people use so many words to say absolutely nothing. Like you said, literally yeah, nothing. Like, the rank ladder you... uh, is it not any. Uh, uh... All right, so this is at four minutes thirty seconds. So I have opinions, and so these are currently opinions and not any uh, statement of the plans that we have, which is uh, the the ranked ladder uh, is uh, a good play experience for some players, but maybe not for everybody. So what I'm looking at is how do we provide the right experience for the different kinds of players? Uh, so, so far, it's been 30 seconds of saying absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, getting getting to number one is a very you know powerful thing, but rank also shares, like, it's skill plus time. It's a little bit different than a skill-based uh, experience. Okay, you so, still you've still said absolutely nothing. You know, one of one of my uh, questions that we have we talk about but we don't have you know solid plans for yet is uh, is ranked doing what we want it to do for the players who are participating in it. And the answer is for some of them absolutely 100. I think for others who care about skill uh, and you know that you know kind of being that number one, they may not be doing as being as effective at that as we would like. So okay, so, mm -hmm. so about, uh, is ranked. 
He addresses it one minute afterwards. To doing what we want it to do for the players who are participating in it. And the answer is for some of them, absolutely 100%. I think for others who care about skill uh, and, you know, that, you know, kind of being that number one, it may not be doing as, being as effective at that as we would like. So mm -hmm. uh, we talk about it. We don't, again, we have a lot of things that we're juggling. So, you know, if and when we make changes is, you know, a little bit of it maybe down the line, uh, but there's certainly opportunity. Um, I don't know that we would split them by format. Uh, we haven't talked about it yet, if mm -hmm. that helps shed some light on it. I don't know why. How have you not talked about it? So many people have talked about it. So many people have requested it. Like uh, players, they, when it first came out, when Standard and Historic were the only two formats, people were like, why are the, why are the rankings combined? And then Alchemy comes out, and then you have another one added to the ladder. And you're like, why? Um, all right, next question. Any news on achievements or rewards that are not tied to winning? So the news there is that our awesome design team is actively doing that. Uh, uh, we're, we're in the exploration phase on unlocking what, what, the, what the possible space is, um, what, what is going to appeal to the most players possible. So mm -hmm. we're actively their next project. Uh, you got to Mythic once and that shit was hard. Yeah, it can definitely be hard, depending. Like, Platinum is surprisingly difficult to get out of, but once you get into Diamond, it's so much easier. Uh, and is in flight right now, but I do not have any details on what that will ultimately look like. Uh, I would expect uh, a lot of our a lot of the people listening to this are you know have, have been past the new player experience, but the way that we rolled that out was we rolled it out in several releases over the course of the first half of the year. I would expect mm -hmm. something similar for achievements, where there might be some releases where there's some uh, moderate progress, and then you know over time we continue to refine and uh, flesh out that project because we want to get you know make progress more visibly over time rather than say hey we're working on this thing and in two and a half years it'll be delivered. That's one of our our philosophy changes over the last you know couple of years is hey let's mm -hmm. deliver value when we have something that's valuable even if it's not 100 percent of everything we want no. a valuable thing to keep in mind with the time it's taking to design and implement achievements is that as a game that's almost entirely pvp uh it's really important to design achievements that don't lead to weird aberrant or degenerate behavior on the player's part yeah you, know, if you have yeah. an achievement for like when trading there's a thousand matches or something you just put a bunch of really weird behavior into the queue if you have there's a lot of things you want to try to avoid basically yeah. They're, I mean, they already have rewards for stuff that isn't just winning, but like the main rewards are revolved around winning. You have like your dailies that are like casting blue spells and white spells and stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, it is revolved around winning. I'm going to bundle a bunch of questions that I've seen together and um, you can all talk about it. It's all kind of under the umbrella of rebalancing. So I've seen a number of questions about um, rebalancing. For they need to fix the hand smoother. There is no true hand smoother the only thing is for best of one what it is is that you they essentially make two of your decks they shuffle them and they draw seven cards and whatever has the best mana curve of those two decks that's what deck they give you for alchemy what's our frequency have we considered doing more um rebalanced limited events and you know we they said it's similar to the Baldur's gate changes i think we did it for snc as well how so why don't you start by talking about um how you all think about rebalance then why do you flutter screw a lot of the time just because that's what happens in magic thing now because i know that that has shifted um and then what's what sort of rebalancing looks like going forward for the various formats that have it all right, well, I'll start, and then I'll let Ian finish, because this is more his wheelhouse, which is... Um... I didn't even hear the question. Just me, what's our frequency? Talk about it. It's all kind of under the umbrella of rebalancing. So I've seen a number of questions about um, rebalancing for alchemy. What's our frequency? Have we considered doing more um, rebalanced limited events? And, you know, we they, they said it's similar to the Baldur's Gate changes. I think we did it for SNC as well. How? So why don't you start by talking about um, how you all think about rebalancing now, because I know that that has shifted. Um, and then what's what sort of rebalancing looks like going forward for the various formats that have it? Uh, well, Tell I'll start, us. and then I'll let Ian finish, because this is more his wheelhouse, which is um, rebalancing uh, and delivering card sets uses the same basic set of people in, the, in, in most cases. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you kind of kind of the, you know, how it started, how it's going, we had, uh, we'll say, high optimism that we'd be able to rebalance more frequently than we've been able to right now. Uh, it is still something that we would yes. like to get to to have a more regular, a, a better, faster cadence of rebalancing, but we just, right now, it's challenging with the amount of the other content that we have. Yeah, because they said they were going to do it every single month. They said they were going to do rebalance changes every single month. This seems to be the first time they've addressed that they're not going to do that, and it's too big of a thing to do for them. Uh, we need to find uh, ways to do it better, but with the systems that we have right now, it's just 
the, is a part of the card set flow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's definitely part of it. The other part of it is just making sure that we understand the data and have enough of it to make informed choices. There are definitely times, not just in alchemy, throughout the whole history of magic, that everyone... Even when it becomes Pioneer? Probably. ...is convinced that deck A is utterly broken and cannot be beaten, and it's going to dominate the format for the next year. And if you wait four weeks, oh, actually, you know what? We all figured out the weakness of this deck, and it's no longer a big deal. It's completely fallen off the ladder. Uh, and it's even though we can move quickly, it's not always the right move. Mm, that's because you're not involved with the community as much. Because you could have more community tournaments if you're doing weekly balances like most every video game, or weekly fixes, weekly patches, stuff like that, like most other video games. They have a lot more developers by the way. Let's see. Uh, here's just a bit of feedback. Please consider removing the kill X creatures or attack X times quest. No reason, but just... Um... Uh, sounds, sounds like a control player. I mean, I struggle with it. I'm not gonna lie, I struggle <laughs> with those. That's, that's the first rebalance. I'm like, click to swap, attack with creatures. This is gonna take forever. Yeah, kind of, you know, I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm a huge fan of that one. <laughs> um, I've, I've seen a few um, uh, questions in this space. Is there any um, thought of uh, further, more robust, different support for Brawl, either regular Brawl, historic uh, Brawl. Um, so I've seen this question a couple ways as um, anthology releases, as um, pre-constructed decks. Um, how do you all think about Brawl support? Uh, I mean, so, go ahead, Ian. You start. I was going to say, sorry. It would be so nice to be in a studio and not remote. Uh, you already said, Chris already said earlier, that Brawl has really jumped up in popularity in the last year, and that level of play merits attention, and it merits... Uh, yeah. focused work. So the, the short uh, answer is, yeah, probably. Yeah. The, uh, the thing I will call out, and again, it was in Jay's article a little bit yesterday, which is uh, <laughs> we are oh, like that's still a, that doesn't really answer, cautious around really promoting Brawl as a hyper-competitive format. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In general, I think any, anything, any of the formats that have had a commander, uh, we're going to be a little bit cautious with. Um, M Zone mostly streams Brawl. Kind of, yeah, uh, she does a lot of Brawl. It seems more so than some of the other formats. There's just a wide range of motivations. Uh, and while winning is always you know, fun and important for those formats, it tends to be not necessarily the number one motivator. So we want to be cautious in that space. Uh, we do know that there are certainly competitive people like, you know, uh, the competitive commander craft does exist. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we're, always, we're already getting a little bit of that in the, in the fact of that it's we're, we're currently stuck with one versus one player versus one player. Uh, so we just want to be cautious in that space and over, over incentivizing, you know, winning is probably more damaging to the format so i would so that's a long-winded way of saying i wouldn't necessarily expect you know full tournament support or uh full range support full so, tournament support you don't even have any tournament uh, this support. next question is probably a question for ian what are your honest thoughts on the explorer metagame right now he said no full tournament support do you think that means they're adding in a tournament thing or do you think he just misspoke the explorer metagame right now i mean my honest thoughts are that missing cards like we, we are aware there are decks that are complete that are doing really well and there are decks that are missing cards that they need and that, that is hurting it right now uh we are genuinely working as fast as we can to get that stuff in we've got ktk work happening as i'm talking there are people working on ktk uh, which brings some really important cards uh that flesh out some deck archetypes uh and yeah do i think arena was rushed to get out uh no it was just it was made by 15 people and it's just not enough i i am aware and we are we've added as much as we can yeah uh again i, I don't want to we'll use this opportunity since we're sharing information which is uh when we look at formats you know there's a lot of talk about how many cards away from a format are we um the number of cards almost isn't terribly relevant it's how many mechanics how many mm -hmm. unique cards right that do things that other cards don't do uh and that's where again yeah. when we look at you know what we've delivered in certain anthologies or uh you know in what which sets we choose to work on some of that is in service to all right where do we get the biggest bang for our buck in mechanics uh because that is more important than specific like the raw count of cards um, mm -hmm. so i just want to call that out again we, we understand that sometimes we're not moving as quickly uh as as folks like but in, in you know the, the realities are that we can't some of the mechanics are complicated and do things that we haven't done on arena and those are going to take mm -hmm. a bigger time. yeah so i guess my answer to that charlie would be i don't think it was rushed out uh i think it was underdeveloped and I think they just have too much technical debt at this point to dig themselves out. I think they're just kind of screwed in a lot of ways. Investment, so we have to have the right window in which to do that. So when we look at, hey, what are we doing for an anthologies or what are we doing for an alchemy drop? Those things are built specifically with the 
bandwidth we have available in the window we had to build them to deliver the best possible thing in that space. And so that's where we're going to see a little bit of push and pull with the, what we deliver versus what ultimately the community might want. Um, speaking of, the, so Jeff's playing off that a little bit, and I got two questions that are in that space back to back. So asking about how hard it has been to implement um, Morph and Delve as, as two of the upcoming mechanics. Um, Delve is fairly straightforward. There's work for it, but it's not an exceptionally complicated mechanic. Uh, there are some edge cases around cards that like exile something at the end of the battlefield. You have to make sure that they that those cards that they care about don't count Delve cards that got exiled from your graveyard. There's a, that's an easy place for issues mm -hmm. to show up. Um, you have to write protection around. Morph is one of those things that the basic case of it is very straightforward, and then you have to capture stuff like that Planeswalker deck Tezzeret that came out six years ago that puts cards onto the battlefield face down, can technically put a Morph card onto the battlefield face down, and it's a 4-4 four -four because Tezzeret did it, but the Morph ability still works to turn it face up. And it's all that stuff that makes Morph it's take It's the longer, weird, or, tiny know, interactions that the, don't make any sense. That have for a Morph card has no room for a text box. So if a Morph card gains abilities, we have to make a custom uh, card display that mm -hmm. show a Morph card that has a text box for the abilities that it's gained. And they're actually answering so, all these questions. It's like, oh God, how do we do this? It's all just like, yep, that's a really long list of little things you got to make sure we're correct. Right. More, 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 uh, knowing this from working on medical line, Morph plus mutate is super fun. <laughs> uh, you, cards, you just flip one right in the middle. <laughs> um, similar question. Uh, does hidden strings keep you up at night? Uh, I say this knowing the people responsible for it. Layer three was a mistake. Uh, yeah, I'm not scared about hidden strings. Layer three <laughs> stuff is not. Uh, or wait, no, sorry, that's uh, that's a different cipher card. Hidden yeah. strings does not keep me up at night. No, um, hidden strings. We, we haven't done cipher yet, but cipher doesn't scare me. It's just work. Yeah, there's different kinds of work. Some of the work is just very like, what are you gonna do? How do you solve this problem? And some work is picking up a bag of rice and carrying it and doing that 200 work. Just yeah. work. Like we know how yeah. to do it. We just need time. Uh, and then the other the other part of the work that exists again that might uh, not be captured in, in it's just you know this card is how are we presenting information to players in the dual scene what are the associated VFX and, and what do those look like you know and that's all again just work that has to be accounted for as part of the the oh uh, cipher is a new unique mechanic that doesn't have oh. any of those components to draw off of yet so what is its visual language and how are we going to make sure that it's the right thing for uh, future versions of cipher cards that we build or other future mechanics that may be in a similar space and, and or already exist that are in a similar space. So right. it's not always just getting the rule to work. Um, we are nearing the end of the stream, so this is a good time for a retrospective question, and it's a good one. Um, are there features or aspects of Arena that currently exist in the game that you didn't expect five years ago? Or also, what things are you most happy or proud uh -huh. of to have implemented? Is that what that uh, means? I am most proud of Jumpstart. Uh, Jumpstart, among pretty much everything on Arena, is something that we were not planning to do that I saw and went, no, I really think we can make this work. I think we can find capacity on the team to get this in. Uh, Damn. I mean, All have right. this format, uh, given that that meant Jumpstart hit during the pandemic. That meant Arena was a place to play Jumpstart, which made me really happy because I mm -hmm. love Jumpstart and I love that people actually got to experience it. Uh, I think that the Jumpstart card pool did a ton to shape the early identity of Historic. It really did a lot to make historic not just standard plus a few sets, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I look back on getting jump started and feel really good about the work that we did there and championing that. Right, uh, So for me, I think uh, you know, kind of surprise. I think more important things they could have done besides jump start. So you could tap the blue player's two lands, turn off their counter spell. Exactly, that's what I'm talking about. You're never gonna want to untap. I mean, maybe untap your own lands, maybe. Guys, and then you know also. We'll, we'll call it proud is um, getting getting to golden packs is a thing that I didn't wouldn't have expected. Yeah, I don't think anyone expected golden packs. He's like, I didn't expect us to be so generous. <laughs> Before we did our economy stream, uh, and then we did the stream and we did some other stuff and, and listened to player feedback and really honed in on again where some of that pain was for the players that we just weren't appealing to in you know how arena's economy was structured. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think golden packs have done a really good job of bridging that gap in a way that makes everybody happy as far as, oh, I'm not a draft player, I can't collect cards that way, or don't want to collect cards that way. Uh, and, you know, having that path to, to build out collections, I think, has been very successful and kind of a perfect win-win for, for how we want to... to it's definitely this. helped a lot. I think Golden Packs is good. Meet players where they're at. Great. Uh, the next thing they need to question, do... Would it be possible... The next thing they need to do is remove the capability of getting rare wild cards from the Mythic Packs. ...to get a draft mode where we can directly invite each of the seats. I'd love to be able to draft with friends. 
I will tell you that we have talked about what that would look like. <laughs> so uh, it is certainly uh, an area of opportunity, particularly when we talk about some. That is a non-answer. Cheers, everybody. Ask. I'm going to summarize a bunch of questions because they, they were all sort of different, but all on the same topic on uh, premier level play, play that qualifies you for, for higher levels, that sort of thing. And I guess I'll just sort of generally ask, are you all happy with the structure that Arena has currently? Are you looking to make any changes? Uh, what are your thoughts on the, the current setup for high level uh, qualifying play in Arena? Uh, I think it is a good start. I do not think we have gotten to our end state yet. Uh, and in fact, I know that I was talking uh, right. with uh, William Jensen a few days ago, William Jensen a few days ago, or last week, uh, about this. Uh, Dude, I swear, if I actually got to talk with these people, I would ask questions that I feel nobody else would think to ask. I don't know. I feel like the questions that I would ask a lot of the developers or project managers would be wildly different than all the questions. Like, there's very few questions that they ask here where I'm like, ooh, that's a good question. It, it almost never happens. Uh, and he's he and I are... Uh, of similar minds and with, there's opportunity in, in what we're doing uh, it's a matter of figuring out what it is that we want to adjust it when and how um, so again i think we have a, a good foundation uh you know learning from Nico is you know you know one of those things that i've done as i've come over from Nico to arena is like what can we, what's what works here what doesn't uh what do we need to adjust and again, i think the arena championship system is a good start i think the hooks into the pro tour are a good start uh i think that there's i'm gonna summarize a bunch of questions because they they were all sort of different okay. but all on the same topic on, his answer uh, didn't sound like he was saying anything you for higher levels that which it seems so that's what Chris does. He's one of those, uh, I use a lot of words and say absolutely nothing type of people. Really ask, are you all happy with the structure that Arena has currently? Are you looking to make any changes? I hate it because I didn't notice that people did that until it was pointed out to me by somebody else. I was, I was watching Destiny. Uh, he's like a YouTube and kick streamer. And he talked about it how so many people say so many words and they don't say anything at the same time. They never actually answer the question. Uh, what are your thoughts on the, the current setup for high level uh, qualifying plan arena? Uh, I think it is a good start. I do not think we have gotten to our end state yet. Uh, and in fact, I know that I was talking uh, okay. with uh, William Jensen a few days ago, Billy Jensen a few days ago. Or Who week, is Billy Jensen? Uh, about this. Uh, and he's he and I are... Uh, of similar minds and with the, there's opportunity in, in what we're doing uh it's a matter of figuring out what it is that we want to adjust it when and how cool story uh, so again i think we have a, a good foundation uh you know learning from Nico is you know you know one of those things that i've done as i've come over from Nico to arena is like what can we what's what works here william the wall jensen oh that sounds sick what a great what a great middle name here what does it uh what do we need to adjust and i think the arena championship system is a good start i think the hooks into the pro tour are a good start uh i think that there's a ton of opportunity to continue to refine it better Ian, any other thoughts on that? Uh, Multiple time PT winner. Uh, okay. And I'm mostly responsible for making sure the cards work correctly. So as long as <laughs> that's the case, I'm happy. Uh, I'm glad that people have the opportunity to get involved in competitive magic from home. I, I know for a lot of people, in addition to a convenience thing, it's an accessibility thing. There are people for whom this is like physically or for health reasons, this is how they can do competitive magic and how they can be mm -hmm. involved in premier level play. And it makes me really proud to be a part of that. I mean, I think we saw some of that. Was it Minneapolis where we saw some of that? Where mm -hmm. the finals was, you know, Reed versus uh, somebody from Arena. So, yeah. mm -hmm. again, I think there's a really cool opportunity in coming back from, you know, Magic Online and being around when Reed was getting a start or when uh, Brad Nelson was getting a start because he qualified for the Pro Tour through Magic Online. I think, again, digital is a very real path to help people get their foot in the door that just may not exist when they don't have a really competitive scene near them. So, I think it's yep. very important. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, we are just about out of time. There are still a ton of great questions in, in chat, so I apologize to everyone who we have not gotten to your question. Uh, we just did like 15 minutes of questions, and they were all great questions and, and really good discussion. So, uh, Garrett, um, Ian, I appreciate your time. Uh, I'm sure chat, you know, they've said it. I appreciate you answering questions. Uh, before we go, we just have like uh, two-ish two minutes left. Um, last thoughts on... I remember back when there was almost 50 questions. Well, actually, no. There was usually like 35 to 45 questions. I think Chris is just really good at using time i wonder if that's why he's here mm, i see you chris with your gunner shades and fifth anniversary this is this is a big deal for you all um any last thoughts on the fifth anniversary <laughs> start with you carrots yeah so I have, I have a couple things uh so first um 
as far as communicate, we've spent a lot of time this year really evaluating how we talk to players and, and fans. We've seen that with Dev Diaries and some of the other stuff. I'm proud of the progress we've made. We have a lot more to go. So expect us to be continue to find ways to be more proactive in conversations so we continue to answer, answer questions. Uh, and then the other thing I'm just going to say, and I said it at the end of the article today, which is you know, five years is amazing, but we are in this for the long haul. None of it is possible without the people who are tuning in and, and playing. Like, it just isn't possible. So undying gratitude and thanks to everybody who, uh, you know, the millions of players that we see that get to, you know, join us and have fun playing the greatest game in the world. So it's can't Ooh. stress enough, enough how much that uh, means to me. And, and Happy five years. Yeah. Ian? Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it to this point, it means you either really enjoyed the video or you fell asleep and I'm waking you up now. <laughs> either way, thank you for all the support. I really do appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification. Come out with videos seven days a week.